Good morning, Eva. So we're up early this morning because Miss Eva has her spade today. So we're getting ready. She's all excited. I told her we're going somewhere. She doesn't realize where we're going. Ellie's kind of excited too. <laughs> Hi, Eleanor. Hi, my Eleanor. Huh. She said, I don't know. I'm telling her going somewhere. So how it works is we're going to drop her off and then... It's, oh, you're so silly. Um, and then we'll pick her up this afternoon. It's weird because a C-section, they're only there for a few hours, but a spay, they're going to keep her all day. So they may call me when she wakes up and they realize that she knows stranger danger. <laughs> She's very sweet. Yes, you are, my good girl. So we're in here, we're just waiting to check in. We're in a room before surgery. She actually came right in because we don't normally come to this department. We usually go to the reproductive and this is just the regular, um, regular vets, but at the specialty place, our regular vet doesn't do them because these guys are too big. Yep, she's trying to get her head harness off. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Francine here at Devoted Danes. I think I'm getting to glare my glasses. Um, hope everyone's doing good and enjoying uh, themselves. I am here. If the weather would just stop being so windy, I could get out and do stuff, more stuff that I wanna get done. But I've actually been pretty lucky. I've been spending a lot of time outside getting stuff done. And that's what we always do in our downtime between litters, we get our stuff outside stuff done um, so I did a lot of gardening well not gardening but getting ready prepping for gardening I got some new um, Virgo um, above ground planters um, for Christmas for my husband that's what I really um, I'm a person that rather uh, get something like that for Christmas and something that I don't want or need so I got a couple of raised beds and I did get my um, green stock filled and outside too so they're all outside they got soil in them they're ready to go for when it's gardening season I try to get stuff like that done be in between litters and we still are tackling um, finishing up things and starting other things so it's really nice to have semi nice weather to do it so Today was Eva's day to bring her to the vet. So she's at the vets right now. Uh, we use our specialty vet for um, spaying. Uh, she had an appointment, got it postponed, so we did go today. Um, how they do spaying is they basically, you drop them off and they stay there the day and then I'm gonna pick her up later tonight. And I figured while I'm home, I wanted to show you a couple things that I'm getting into and getting ready for our next breeding season or our next girls that go into heat, which uh, we all know one is Maggie, Magnolia, a uh, beautiful fawn mantle. We have been thus unsuccessful in breeding her so far, so I figured we have to up the ante to try to get, um, get her bred this time, so um that so why we bring eva to the uh, specialist to get our spade is because our our regular vet just doesn't feel comfortable spaying a, a girl of that size so that's where we kind of do that um there and so they've done a lot of c-sections for us they've done emergency spay and c-sections which usually you're in and out within a few hours it's not fast but you're in and out within three or four hours, something like that. So I normally just wait there. But today I did drop her off and I will go back to pick her up. So, um, and then Ebby will be later on. Not in a rush. Um, I know if I'm not breeding them, I just don't breed them. But um, I like to give them time for their bodies to go back and heal from having their puppies before I do space. So Ebby will be next. Um, and it's surprisingly like the cost of vet care too. Um, because Eva is a mature female, it costs more. And um, I can kind of see in some reasons why, because she's had um, 
been had c-sections before so it's a little bit more tricky for them um, but it is outrageous the amount of money that you pay for vet care so we are in New Hampshire and so um, what a spay for them is because um, I got a um, estimate but it doesn't matter what it would cost she needs to be done and that's what we would do but it is it is surprising so the estimate was anywhere from a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars to have Eva spayed so we'll see when I pick her up but I'm fine as long as I know ahead of time so I can be prepared and be ready for that and um, she's definitely worth it um, so that's that's uh, Ebby I mean sorry that's Eva's update and Ebby will be next um, so back to our breeding of trying to get our so we will have like three girls should be coming into heat soon Lexi's one of them she goes she's due to go into heat anytime but she's not the typical uh, gale that goes in every six months she's like Ellie she goes in maybe once a year so because um, the girls that she was in heat with before have already come and gone back into heat like uh, <clears throat> Eva was one and Eva's already been into heat. So Eva just finished her heat and she's fine. That's why I thought it would be a perfect time. And it's been over six months since her last litter. So um, she went in. So then we will have Maggie and Nala again. Um, so you, it's kind of tricky too because you don't want to breed them too early and you don't want to breed them too late. So it's kind of like you try to hit the window of opportunity, but doesn't always work out that way. So this is what I'm working on. So because um, if you watched our last videos, I tried um, the target prode uh, pedestrian testing. The reason why I did that is because we live an hour and 10 minutes away from our reproductive vet. They're the ones that do pedestrian testing. So it is not feasible for me to bring her um, whenever, you know, I could bring her and they say bring her back in two days and I work so it's i just couldn't do it schedule wise to bring her to try to do the pedestrian so i don't i bought the target test and it did give me some experience and clarity of <clears throat> what it takes and what it you know what i had to do i have to draw blood so that was something new and i've mastered that so i feel a little bit confident um so but i just i liked the target test it did tell me she ovulated but it doesn't give numbers so there could be some interpretation or misleadings to that like yes she ovulated but um just because they ovulate doesn't mean the numbers will automatically spike up sometimes they um, stay around in that area and spike later so prime example was nala last time I bred her first um, and Ebby after her and they both had a week difference and they both had their puppies on the same day. So it looked like Nala was ready. She was flagging and everything, but she haven't, she didn't ovulate until a week later. So therefore only one puppy came out. Um, so the semen can live up to five to seven days. So that semen obviously did and she had a singleton. So the timing was off. So and they don't ovulate every time on the same day. So basically when they start bleeding, I consider that day one, and then I'll breed on a specific day. They say day 11 is a good day. Um, I noticed with Great Danes, they, with my girls, it's more like 11 and 12. But even then, it's not an exact science. We've had some breed on day 18 and have big litters. We'd have some breed on day 12 and have a singleton. So there's never, a rhyme or reason so I decided I got to get this under wraps and I'll show you what I did I decided to buy a whole pedestrian machine myself a fin care it's it it's gonna give me numbers it's just like if I had went to the vets it calibrates it tells me numbers it stores numbers for girls so if I'm testing two girls I'll put in the information it'll spit out a um a paper saying what your your girl's numbers at so I um, really wanted one of these for a while I did a lot of research there's a guy on YouTube that I watch and he lives by these and I feel confident because I can 
call the number for support. Um, and the guy on there always does like step by step um, how to do it. But because I did the target, I kind of get the idea. So it gave me the gist. It gave me, I did learn something from it of how it works. So I decided I'm going to buy one of these. These are very expensive. <laughs> but um, in the long run, what's more expensive? Missing several litters or biting the bullet in, in buying these. So I bought these. I also bought a bunch of, these are the kits. The pedestrian kits are inside. And this box comes with 10 kits. And honestly, when you go to the vet to do pedestrian testing, because I have done reverse pedestrian testing at the vet, and it's expensive. You have to have an exam. You have to do this, do that. These are about $10 a piece, the tests. So honestly, I bought several of them because I really want to make sure we know how to use it. We're comfortable with using it, and I have success. So these are um, the test. Let me see if I can open this and just kind of give you a gander of what it looks like. So I can go back online and order these. These go in the refrigerator. Draw blood. You have to mix it. And these little tubes have, uh, let me see if I can cue in on that. It's not, they have the liquid in it that you put it in. The serum, not the blood. And then these are the tests. And with every kit, you calibrate your machine. So it's always correct. It gives you pipettes. And this is the box of 10. It stores in the refrigerator. I bought several because I really want to get comfortable with it, try it out. Everybody's, um, so I got a bunch of these. So what these would be would, once you take your blood sample, you want to put it in one of these. And then once you get it in that, you want to do the sense of future. And what it is, is you put your samples in here and it spins it. So by spinning it, it separates the serum for the blood. So I know all about that because because I did the target test, I was able to, and I haven't used this stuff yet. I just got it in. So I want to set up like a specific area for all this. So this is the mini centrifuge and it has all the directions on how to use it. So I knew I was going to get one of these because I didn't like the way I had to do it before. So I ordered that. And then I got this. So if I do, because this machine can do several tests at once. So you can have your results, your stuff sitting here waiting. So this holds all those. This is a canine and feline pregnancy test. So I thought, oh, I'd like to try them. So again, it gives you everything in the kit that you need. Take the blood, you know, you put it in here, you shake it up, you put it in the mixer. So I got some of these. I don't know how many I got. Five, five of them maybe. And I can use those for cats too, but as you know, we spay our cats around here. Except for if you can't catch them. Hmm. <laughs> So this is a cool little um, device, a pipette mechanical one. So basically what you do is when your blood has already been in this machine and spun, it coagulates, you just want to take the top syrup out. That's what actually goes into the test. It goes in the, to the, the test and then... <clears throat> Before you put it into the test, you want to just take um, the serum from the top. So this will actually just pick up that and it puts it on the slide. So it's just kind of a fancy way to do it. You could do it with a dropper or something less. I have. Um, I bought, I can get, I have a bunch of syringes anyway, but I got about 50 syringes with this. Um, I use syringes anyway because like I give stuff to my uh, ducks and turkeys if someone's sick so I can order them on revival um, you definitely will have a hard time trying to go to a pharmacy to get syringes because they assume everybody is a heroin addict but um, 
because that's how I first started. I didn't know where to get them, and I had a sick turkey, and they looked at me like I was on heroin. And who's going to believe a crazy lady going into Rite Aid asking for uh, a needle to give inject her turkey? <laughs> that did happen. That's a true story. So I also got this. It's sticking. And that's a Vortex mixer. It mixes. And this also came with the, the machine. It's called a incubation tray and timer so it's timers so it has up to five places on it and then because you could do several uh several tests at once so that came with the machine i didn't buy it um they just threw it in there i guess but yeah so i got all this stuff and um there's graphs on uh like what numbers come up Almost like the other one, it had a paper of different things. So this one does too. And it'll tell you uh, basically, okay, what well, your number's this, um, your number's that. You know, it'll tell you to, uh, like when your numbers are between 6 and 10, your ovulation, estimated. Uh, so it gives you like a little bit of um, information on how to use the machine too, other than just the numbers. So, so this is her first official heat, which is about right. She's a year old. Um, sometimes they can be longer, but she's right on target. Huh, Fiona? A pedestrian test, um, <laughs> she keeps jumping. So once I get my pedestrian machine all set up and start using it, um, it'll be awesome. Um, but I gotta, I want to make a permanent area for it, so. These three play a lot together. Uh, so she's outside by herself. Fiona does not want no part of it. I know, I told them he was taking a nap. Um, so somebody's birthday's coming up too, in May. Somebody will be nine. We have a big birthday planned for her. Um, all her fans know she loves biscuits so i started getting her birthday stuff together um her birthday's in may and so is ebby's so we have two birthday babies and i actually one of my sons is in may too a lot of birthdays in may but fiona's nine she's the queen of the house these guys just want to play she said i got a toy but cheska's very good with them so she play. she goes out and plays with these guys quite a bit actually because they're uh, even though there mm, will be almost six months in May, they'll both be six months. Violet's a couple weeks older than Grizz, but um, they're the closest to her age. She's over a year now. Oh, he ran right up and gave her a smooch. So, hmm. I also got Grizzly's color testing back today just to see what he carries. And this little guy carries a lot of colors, which I'm super excited. Oh, isn't that cute? So he carries blue, obviously chocolate, um, a black mask. He has one KB gene, which is black. He carries blue, lilac, uh, fawn sable, piebald, and Cheska carries piebald too, so together they were produced piebalds. Um, like with Violet, he carries lilac. I'm sure Violet does too, because her mom was lilac, so is his. So they would be lilac, blue. Um, and he also carries Harlequin and Meryl. So he carries a pretty good rainbow. And that's what I wanted when I intended to get a solid boy. When I say solid, it's he's not considered spotted. Like Fiona's a spot, Violet's a spot, and Farley, my other. Uh, one of my other males is considered a spot too because he's a Merrill. So it's limited on what <laughs> I just got, what I can breed them with. But I like having a solid boy. He can be bred with anything, but he carries spots. That's what I was looking for. And he has such a great disposition. He really does. I'm very pleased with him. Violet is a great puppy too. She's very happy. The only downfall with her is we're still struggling with potty training. So at six months old... Um, she has a delicate belly is what it is so um, even her regular food if she has an accident it's such a mess and she tends to have poop accidents so you can just imagine 
somebody's not happy that they're playing on their couch while she's trying to nap. I'm sure they're sorry, Fiona. Look at this carpet is specked everywhere. Yes, messy everywhere. Hi, pretty girl. She is sweet. She is a moose. Yes, she is a bit of a moose. Yep. Neither one of them had needed shots lately, so I really don't know how much they weigh, but obviously Violet outweighs Grizz. Look at the way he just sits on there and play. Grizzy, you're too sweet. So, lots of cool things to come. I'm excited. Uh, you know, next year, around this time, Violet, uh, Francesco will be ready to have her first litter. Yep. Hi, Chesk. And I, I like how Cheska is taller than her dad, and she's well-proportioned, where I feel like Diesel has a big head <laughs> and uh, not so big of a body, which is good because the bigger body, it's harder on the joint, so I'm totally fine with that. It just, he doesn't look as well-proportioned as Cheska does. So, but that's her daddy. So I plan on using Mr. Diesel with Magnolia. And Diesel with Magnolia this time too. I think if I'm gonna get a litter, I'm gonna go for what I the colors I'm looking for. So as we all know, Diesels are pretty uh, mantle tan point. Maggie carries all the array of beautiful colors: chocolate, blue, lilac, like her dad, tan point, and she's a mantle. So they would have magnificent puppies. So that's what we're gonna try for now that we have a progesterone test. Uh, we will probably be AIing, artificially inseminating Maggie Doo because she's no one's been able to breed the old girl since yet. Uh, she lets them, but for some reason, we're not getting a tie. We get a lot of slip ties, and that's about it, and that's not cutting it because she had a lot of slip ties with Farley. Uh, so, we're not going to use Farley, we're going to use Diesel for her, and I'm not quite sure who I'm using for uh, Nala, whether I'm using Hurley. Or Diesel's my other alternative because Farley's her daddy. So, lots of things. So, we got Eva home. It's the next day. She's doing great. Um, she did stay till like five at night. Um, so, they really kept her for a while. But I think it's a great idea that they did because she came, when she came home, she was more alert. As soon as she saw me, she lightened up her little face. And then we just about ran to the door to leave <laughs> so she wasn't happy but she's really doing awesome so she goes back in 14 days to have her staples out um, and um, everything went great for her spay so that's what we like to hear because I just worry about this little this little lady humble so um, she is on Rimadol her meds so she had them this morning because they give her a 24-hour shot and so she's feeling her pain meds and it's doing what it's supposed to do she feels comfortable but she's able to get on the couch she does our stairs to go out back to go potty so she's doing really good i'm happy she's just hanging out with her friend eleanor her sister from another mister